Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Here's why lead generation alone is no longer a strategy. Now, obviously, we all understand that the goal for every coach, consultant or small business owner is to get more clients and customers and even generate revenue so you can grow your online business. And I assume that's the goal that you have and the one that you want to uh, so that you can achieve uh, in your business. Um, that way, your business can become profitable and enjoyable. And I'm also supposing that's the reason why you are listening to the online prosperity experience every time we drop an episode. But how can you achieve that goal when lead generation is no longer the strategy? And obviously, uh, somebody might be listening to this and they already have their BS uh, writer going, wait a minute. So if lead generation is no longer the strategy, then you know what else is there? Well, in this episode, I'm going to walk you through um, all the things that are actually happening with the current customer. We're going to talk about what's called the duck funnel that doesn't even involve your work at all. And we're going to talk about um, why selling your way to growth is now one of the worst strategies that you might want to implement in your business. And guess what we're doing? We are literally throwing away the whole marketing book. So I know what you're going to need in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable is an actual actionable digital marketing strategy that actually works and is proven for you to get results. And look no further, the online prosperity experience is there for you. And I know that you as a coach or consultant, you're going to need a good and detailed action plan with the right steps that you should be taking from you know, where you are right now, point A to point B, where it is that you want to be. And you're going to need to have a powerful system that you can use and that will guarantee you with success. So don't you worry, we've got that right for you. I want you to discover the dirty little secret that no other marketing agency will tell you about actually growing your coaching and consulting and even service based business online. Now, let me tell you something. I understand and I pretty much know that growing your own business is tough. You know, you're cold calling potential clients and you're having them um, hang up in your face or you're sending out hundreds of emails without getting so much of a thanks for reaching out, Sam, or you're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without even generating any qualified leads. So I'm here to tell you that lead generation is no longer a strategy and no longer should you feel that no one wants to buy what you're selling and you know especially if you're relying on your business to pay up all your bills and um, maybe rent and put food on the table it can be an enormous strain on your emotions and you're terrified of having to give up on your dreams and the last thing you want to do is return to that safe nine to five job with your tail tucked in between your legs because you can't bring in new clients. Now, let me tell you something. For me, it has not always been this easy. You know, um, you know, I came and grew up um, from a small town in Zimbabwe, in Africa, where we literally had no hopes uh, that I would amount to anything, you know? And now I'm sitting at a, you know, at the realm of a digital agency that has generated over 75 plus million dollars in client revenue and also the success that we've had for our own selves. And like I said, I didn't have a lot of money or ambition to become a successful business person, but my life changed when a bright eyed Australian teacher came to my school and she taught me pretty much all about Australia and what it had to offer okay so this is what i'm hoping that i will do for you 
uh, in order for you to enter into this next realm, knowing what exactly you need to do, um, you know, in order for you to be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, without further ado, I'll tell you something. One of my favorite, favorite instances or days as a digital marketer is when, um, when we have maybe a coach or consultant or CEO calling to inquire about our digital marketing services, maybe they would have read one of our blogs or they would have seen uh, one of our videos, um, you know what I mean? Or, you know, they would have um, come across our information uh, from other, um, you know, people that we've helped or just maybe simply listened to a podcast like this. And with us um back in the time the sales cycle usually lasted for about two days and most of the people that we may receive so let's put an example of maybe a ceo or a coach or consultant reaches us to us and for us the sales cycle would usually last maybe two days and half of the people that are reaching out to us maybe are not in our system or have not even filled out a form or let alone downloaded any of our resources. And I'm not sure um, how the CEO had found, um, you know, our website or our post. And I probably should have asked them how, how that happened. And I'm, I had not been sort of regularly creating maybe any thought leadership content. And this opportunity would never um, have materialized if we are not putting our stuff out there because every single moment that we are um, reaching out to our audience, we are educating them on what we provide. We're um, inspiring them to want more and we're educating them on what's possible, especially in the digital marketing space. So this CEO that reached out to me wasn't looking for maybe a, a training solution or that we're not looking um, for our consulting or any information or any of our expertise. And there's no way if they would have seen an advert from us or a product or, or any content would have caught their attention because they were not in our radar at all. And the problem, the problem with having a product uh, centric, you know, pieces of content out there that leaves behind maybe a landing page with the intention of, um, capturing somebody's contact information, which basically is what we call lead generation. This is what a lot of people are doing. And it's out of sync with how today's buyer wants to do their research. So when somebody is researching um, for a product, they probably ask um, their peers. They probably, um, you know, look at uh, industry publications Nobody's just going to rock up at your website and download whatever it is that you have for them there, which is what the old um, lead generation process was. People are doing their research and they're not expecting to leave their details unless it's really, really, really life and death. So it is too early in that process, you know, when they're just looking. All right. And they don't want emails uh, to come through bombarding them with buy my stuff or any of the content that we send out with our emails or they don't want to be called every second day by you know our sales reps just because they left their details on our website that is far from what the customer of today is um searching for and i was reading somewhere that search um is actually privately going into voice so much that there's not going to be a screen involved in the future where, um, you know, people are, are just going to seek out information from Google and utilize whatever, um, you know, voice um, information that is returned to them without them having to opt in or um, having to uh, sign up to anything uh, in order to leave their details, which is what lead generation has obviously been uh, in the past. So the way you win in B2B right now is to take the long-term view to educate, like I have uh, mentioned, to engage your audience and to actually participate in their ecosystem, all right? And not only will you have to generate demand over time, but you also have to spend fewer dollars to get a higher quality inbound leads that have a preferred uh, position 
um, you know, based on what it is that you have um, delivered to them or what your promise is that the competition is not offering. So you want to be putting out inspirational content there that is providing value and positioning you as the go-to thought leader within your industry. So thought leadership content should be created for engagement, not for lead capture. Um, and this is the new uh, way of actually showing people that you can help them by actually helping them. I can totally understand that, you know, you've always been um, measuring, um, you know, how you're getting your leads by the amount of people that download something or by the amount of people that actually sign up to everything. And this is going to create a big dilemma to, you know, um, you know, coaches and consultants that are accustomed to measuring maybe your marketing qualified leads as a predictor of how somebody is either going to buy or willing to uh, make a purchase of your services, you know. And nowadays, people are just approaching our content or our information from so many angles that all they just want is an answer to whatever it is, um, the problem that they have or whatever solution that might be available. You know, have you ever typed into Google and maybe you're looking for a list of maybe steps on how to create a website and somebody has a snippet of that information where all of that information is already available on the, you know, the search results page so much that you don't even need to click on the link to go to get that result. All right. So whoever would have put that information there, um, 75 percent of the traffic that arrives at that, um, um, you know, post uh, just getting information. They don't even know what website created it. They don't even know um, who. Um, you know, you know, the brand that, um, you know, fostered that information, people are just coming to the internet to just get whatever information and move on, um, you know, with their lives. So this is what is now called a duck funnel. All right. So at the end of the day, when you start creating content, which is more demand centric, it actually requires you to satisfy short sales um, you know, cycles, which the bias intent is identified by the kind of information that they're looking for. And you want to just make sure that your content there is driving them towards, um, the bias journey that you want without them having signed up for anything. Okay. So this is where you create a dark funnel. So you might be wondering what is a dark funnel? You know, and, you know, at the end of the day, it is a given that our buyers are using the Internet to research products and services because that's where any initial, um, you know, product journey starts. It starts with a search, but they're doing it differently today than they did a decade ago. All right. Back then, like I said, search is predominantly started with Google which is why most content marketing strategies for lead generation are focused on optimizing the buyer intent keywords and phrases. And as we are an SEO, um, you know, agency as well, we use strategies that help our customers um, put the information in front of an audience that is willing and able to make a purchase. So SEO strategies worked because the buyer would find the content there, leading them to the website where, Maybe the anonymous traffic would then be converted by either downloading a white paper that promised to give them the solution. And that lead was then handed over to maybe your sales department or to like an email nurture sequence in order to nurture them and then book appointments. So this obviously worked so well that the majority of, um, you know, coaches and consultants jumped onto this bandwagon. But today, because the buyers are bombarded with content and sales emails, They've largely tuned out and it has now become much more um, valuable for somebody to issue out their email address um, unless the content is like a life and death situation like I mentioned earlier on. So 
obviously, like I mentioned, now they start the searches by asking their peers, whether it's from a direct message or just participating in a network, okay? And I think um, there's a chief marketing officer of a company called Six Sense. She describes this uh, phenomenon as the duck funnel. So these are all your ideal customers that are looking for a solution like yours and they're potentially making purchases and buying these solutions like yours, but you cannot reach them. You don't know where they are. You don't know what they're looking for. You don't know what they're searching, but they are buying because people are always buying stuff out there. Maybe they're not buying from you, but they're buying from somebody else. And you, and you are not even driving this traffic to your website and you're not even seeing what patterns or what keywords they're searching. And you're not even engaging with them at all, but these people are still buying. There's a market out there for what you're searching, but they're just not showing, um, you know, their heads out there. I, I, I call people like that chameleons because chameleons come onto an environment and then they blend in with that environment. And if you don't shake the tree or anything, you would, you would actually walk past a chameleon because it's camouflaged. And that's what our customers have uh, learned to do. They come in and get all the information without them leaving any information like their email address or their phone number for any follow up. And therefore, this then creates what we call a duck funnel. So that's why you need to create content that engages and that actually educates so that people can either bookmark your website or come back for more. And the more that they come uh, to your site or to your content, the more they start trusting your process. And obviously, the reason now that people are just going in um, anonymously um, is, 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 is simply because they're being bombarded by emails out there. And the result is that your ideal customers are definitely in the market for what you do, but you have no idea and you're never going to know who they are or what it is that they are doing. So naturally, you can't sell your way to growth anymore. All right. I think it was uh, Peter Drucker. Um, you know, who said um, in his book, Management, there will always be one, um, what, what was that? They, they will always, um, I think one can assume, be a need for some selling. But the aim of marketing is to make selling super flaws, which is easy, okay? And the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that your product or service fits him and sells itself. And then he goes on to explain this by saying, ideally, marketing should um, result in a customer who's ready to buy. All that should be needed then is to make the product and service available, which means your logistics um, rather than salesmanship and statistical distribution rather than promotion. All right. So that's where I see some of these progressive uh, definitions of marketing qualified leads that we are receiving today. You know, only counting people that are sales ready, people that have raised their hand or people that have knocked on your house's door and said, hey, I'm here and ready to buy. At which point there's no reason for you to start in, in, you know, incentivizing them with sales or putting discounts because these people have already agreed to make a purchase from you. All right. And this is why so many companies are moving, you know, their sales uh, development representatives to work under marketing where they are not maybe incentivized to set appointments because these people have already, the customers have already raised their hand uh, to say, yes, we're ready to make a purchase, you know, and that's why salespeople might not be given, um, you know, commissions in, in for any appointments that are set because it's all now done automatically, um, you know, by some sort of software. And this is a hard pill to swallow for many people who have invested a lot or heavily in some sort of predictable revenue model, which is guaranteed by the amount of appointments that have been set. And they continue to sort of uh, promote product oriented um, content in order for them to generate leads and let them, you know, their uh, self development teams chase them down by sending them a bunch of emails or calling them and, and just really bombarding them into taking some sort of a meeting or uh, starting 
a um, um, you know a, a, a trial which they might be uh, putting through, and it's hard um, because too many times they find that you know when these meetings happen. The people that they're reaching out to might not have a budget, might not actually have the authority or any need or meet even a timeline of when they want to make a purchase of the product. And they may be interested in the product, but there's no opportunity, um, you know, in the near future for them to uh, make a purchase from you. And it's hard to make that model work or scale these days because it's out of sync with how buyers want to buy. They want to consume information anonymously and reach out for a demo and talk to a sales professional when they're ready. You know, it's like when you go and buy clothes in a, in a, in a, in a clothes shop. The moment the sales person reaches out to you and says, um, can I help you? And you automatically say, no, I'm just browsing. 90% of the time, that's all you're going to end up doing, just browsing and not make a purchase. But if somebody doesn't speak to you and just looks at you and maybe says, good afternoon, and they don't ask you if, they, if you need any help, you will end up buying stuff from them simply because you feel like they are judging you or they are sizing you up as a person who can't afford whatever is in the shop. I wish all retail people would understand that psychological trick but obviously they feel like it's ignoring the customer when the customer comes in to your shop and then they you don't ask them if they want to make a purchase or not so this is why i'm also gonna um um you know uh advise for you to um vanquish um all your um you know sales sales uh letters or sales pages or something of that nature, you know, or vanquish most of your landing pages, okay? Because the, the reason why we're saying this is because the movement is to create a better buying experience for the people that walk onto your website. And that means getting rid of most of your uh, landing pages that are just asking uh, people to leave their details. The original name for a landing page was a squeeze page. Okay, so the connotation to that is to squeeze your customers of all the information that they um, have, which normally is their email address or a phone number. And it actually causes a lot of friction and it increases bounce rates on your website. And most importantly, it creates a poor experience for your buyer because most people have um, you know, those um, uh, pop-ups that uh, come in and say, hey, you should buy from us. And those pop-ups are really annoying and they really make people want to leave that site and never want to come back. You know, if you've ever hesitated to download a free white paper or free download because you didn't want to be added to a list, then you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the drive for marketing qualified leads to convert is also some sort of symptom of the lead generation culture where the role of marketing is viewed only as sales enablement instead of a strategic driver for the business, okay? So all I'm saying is it really makes me sad to see that marketing is viewed as a service organization to the company and that, you know, they're doing maybe, um, you know, sales uh, recall or, you know, you're doing a webinar or the CEO wants a press release and you're left with maybe a list of people that don't even know who you are and don't even want to hear from you. And any of these tactics that just come out of nowhere, all right? So I think sometimes we fall into this trap of wanting to please everyone and do all the things, but it is a recipe for disaster, okay? Not that I'm proving, I mean, not that proving lead providing um, leads to sales is an important uh, part or an, an important aspect of marketing, but you need to get in sync with the sales to define what a marketing qualified lead um, handoff should look like where there's zero hesitation to pursuing it. And they can't blame marketing for any low leads, okay? So your number one object objective for content is engagement, not for lead generation. You need to be providing information out there to your audience so that they get to know, like, and trust you. And guess what? 
people do business with those that they know like and trust okay we as a business we've stopped looking at whether a single uh, piece of content will create any sort of leads and it, we we instead focus on whether it's generating engagement within that target audience we need to make sure that we have clarified our message enough that our target market actually understands who we are and what it is that we can do for them right one of the things that we are doing uh when we look at our lead quality is we recently um received an email that stated um hey we've re- we've done an extent uh, an exhaustive review and live long digital is in the top 3 we would like to schedule a demo um and please cover these 10 points that is what we want from the leads that we are looking for because we've provided enough information to our audience that they feel like we are the right kind of person with the right um kind of solution for what it is that they're looking for so if you want people to consume your content or to consider you and believe that you are the potentially best fit for their business requirements you need to make your education process as friction free as possible and trust me sales will quickly pursue any leads that match your ideal client profile and if they're motivated to talk um you know if they're motivated by the education that you're providing them guess what they will actually uh want to do business with you okay so at the end of the day so many people really want to be taken off um you know your marketing list because half of the time the information that we're sending to them does not relate to who they are or where they are in their buyer's journey okay um I'll tell you something the the writing has been on the wall for at least 5 years as a whole that the lead to conversion process has actually broken down our customers are no longer following the I'll download something you send me a couple of emails and then I will think about it uh process that we think is working and it has led to bad marketing procedures and a high um you know uh, you know bounce rate in our um you know our landing pages so while the old metrics metrics for lead generation may still look good in the boardroom or you know when you're high-fiving your team the after effects are not you know you're setting um you're setting up either sales or marketing for failure if you depend on who does a better job and definitely you know putting blame uh on the wrong metrics okay what you really need to be doing is create content that resonates to your audience and clarify your message enough so that people can understand what it is that you're offering them and if you're the right kind of person to um you know uh, solve their problem and let's face it marketing and sales have re- ridden the gravy train for far too long and it's past time to use better marketing and sales pra- um you know practices and we need to engage our buyers on their terms instead of trying to convert them into our sales funnel and just bombard them with emails that do not actually relate to where they are in their business which is what we should have been doing all along so at the end of the day what we really need to be creating is information that is relevant to our audiences and we really need to be um putting stuff out there that actually serves our audience instead of just trying to put them onto a list and then just bombard them with emails you know and this is how you then grow your business moving forward all right nobody wants to be con- constantly receiving emails that do not help them um actually be do and have a happier existence and i understand the biggest problem as an entrepreneur you know marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business at the end of the goal your real um at the end of the day your real goal is is you cuz you want to help your customers you want to help your clients and you want to spend as much time as possible changing people's lives and solving problems and you don't want to end up having to tinker with your market so let us help you figure it all out okay so if you've been riding the gravy train of just lead generation within your business you need to actually move a little bit further and start engaging your audience and putting out inspirational 
content out there and really educating your audience on what to want because you then become the preferred supplier. And I want you to win. I want you to uh, start creating for and relating to your audience so that you will become the go-to person in your industry. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.